Good evening. My name is Dan Combest. How are you all doing tonight? How many of you actually brought your cell phones in with you tonight? How many of you actually turned your cell phones off thinking, I don't want to interrupt Dan? That's because you guys have cell phone etiquette, and I appreciate that. But unfortunately, not all of our young people do out there. They're just learning to how to use their cell phone. And I was actually, uh, I'm going to start over. Dan, I totally lost my place. Okay. Sorry. I jumped. No, it's okay, because you don't have to actually start and stop, huh? Yes, I do. No, you don't. Stop. Good evening. My name is Dan Combus. How are you all doing tonight? First off, I'd like to ask you, how many of you have cell phones with you? How many of you actually thought to turn off your cell phones or put them on buzz before we began the class? Very good. I appreciate it. I'd like to talk to you tonight about cell phone usage in actual classrooms. And I don't think our students are actually ready and my ch our children are ready to actually have cell phones in class. Around the country, though, there's a lot of pressure going from the student body and from others outside that are wanting to actually push the cell phones into the classroom. And I'd like to talk to you tonight about that. Tony Coons of the Courier Journal gives the first indication school board was revisiting the decade old policy of no cell phones in school. And it was updated in August that they're now going to allow seven of the high schools here in Jefferson County to actually allow cell phones in the classroom. So let's take a look first. Typically about, I use maybe eight to 10 minutes of cell phone during the month while my daughter probably uses 15 to 20 minutes. I probably use somewhere around 20 text messages per month. My daughter usually averages somewhere around 3,500. She also uses about 2.2 gigabytes worth of information. So you can see there's a big disparity there. And of course, they're being actually pandered to by the cell phone industry, and they're now one of the highest marketed areas out there. So let's take a look at, the, at those numbers. So Mary Madden and Amanda Lanhart wrote an article for the Pew Research Center Teens and Technology 2013, that 78% of teens now have a cell phone, and almost half, 47% of them, now own smartphones. That translates to a 30% increase to teens having smartphones, up from 23% in 2011. So you can see there's a, there's a large increase in the cell phones as they're being marketed to these teenagers now. And students feel, well, I've got a cell phone, I should be able to use it anytime I want. They use them during class. They use them at the dinner table. They use them throughout, all the time. And they're also putting more pressure on the principals to allow them to use their, their cell phones in class. So now we have an understanding of cell phone usage amongst teens. Let's take a look at their uh, efforts as far as how it affects their learning. Cell phones have no place in the academic learning environment as far as I'm concerned. As they cause major problems for the instructors and for the teachers alike. Deborah Tindall did a study for Wiles University in 2012 and found out that 97% of all students actually text during class. So they should be studying, they should be learning, but they're actually texting. And while doing that, one in 10 actually texts while taking the test. So it can be quite distracting for the instructor and for other students involved. So I questioned my daughter herself, and she says it is. She hears cell phones going off all the time with other students as they reach into their bag and slide their cell phones out and hide it behind their books and so forth to text during class. Well, how does that actually affect them as far as their grades go? Well, Brittany Harmon in the Department of Physiology did a study also on how it affects students on their grades. And she found most importantly in the study revealed that more than, than anything else, that individuals who have an excessive amount of texting have a lower GPA. So the more they text, the more distracted they are, and the lower their GPA goes. Their, their, squ their quiz scores are lower, their comprehension just decreases, and they're not participating in class. So what can we as parents do? Well, as parents, I encourage you to attend your local PTAs and talk to your principal and the staff and get involved. Second thing I would do is actually write your school board members and let them know your displeasure of actually having cell phones in class. And second is keep an eye on your, or third is keep an eye on your daughter and make sure that, and your sons, and make sure that they know not to be using their cell phones during the classroom and if they're there to actually learn something. And monitor them. You can, it's easy to check and look at cell phone records. So in conclusion today, we discussed some of the things that are affecting uh, students by use of their cell phones. 
And we also explored ways that, you know, the industry is actually out there marketing to these individuals. We also took a look at how it's affecting them on their grades. So in, in conclusion, so the next time you're in a meeting and you hear a cell phone vibrate or ring, ask you, did my child turn off their cell phone today? Thank you. <laughs>